Hello, dear colleagues. I am glad to see you again. And uh, today I would like to discuss with you uh, about basics of uh, DME DME navigation. As you know, uh, nowadays uh, positioning algorithms by pairs of navigational aids uh, are considered as a main standby positioning approach on board of aircraft. That's why it makes sense uh, to discuss uh, the main navigation equations and uh, approaches of navigation by pairs of navigational aids. And today uh, we try to cover their positioning by pairs of DME. First of all, uh, let's talk about the main positioning sensors that we have on board of aircraft. And uh, as you know that GNSS or Global Navigation Satellite System uh, is considered as a primary sensor of uh, aircraft location on board. That's why uh, we consider GPS, GLONASS, Galileo, Baidu, receiver or if uh, it is modern aircraft we can talk about multi-constellation positioning approach on board of aircraft. In case if we have uh, some malfunction of onboard equipment uh, we need to switch uh, from a GNSS sensor to the inertial navigation system. On board of aircraft uh, we can use inertial reference system or attitude heading and reference system which holds their sensor installation which uh, give us possibility to count uh, our coordinates by inertial navigation method. However, uh, due to poor accuracy of sensors uh, we need to pay attention that we cannot use inertial navigation uh, too many times because at each step uh, our errors of uh, measurements will be accumulated in our position result. And uh, finally uh, we can use not uh, more than 7 or 10 minutes if you talk about modern aircraft. Um, that's why two of these types of sensors are compatible with um, performance-based navigation manual, which is uh, AKO documents or 9630. Uh, and uh, in case if uh, after inertial navigation system reach maximum value of his uh, errors in case if we do not have access to GNSS sensor uh, flight management system uh, should decide to use another positioning approach based on pairs of navigational aids. First of all we need to talk about positioning by DME DME because uh, algorithm of uh, DME DME positioning give us the maximum uh, accuracy of positioning. However, in case if um, uh, configuration of navigational aids is not uh, good for aircraft, we can try to use position by pair of VOR DME. And in this case, usually we use co-located VOR and DME at one place. That's why. In this case, we can use uh, only one ground station and we can measure distance and angle to the station and based on this data we can estimate uh, our coordinates. Also, based on uh, ICAO documents, uh, only DME DME and VOR DME navigation uh, are compatible with uh, RNP RNAV1 due to uh, acceptable level of uh, navigation system error. However, on board of some aircraft uh, may be possible uh, angular-based uh, method of aircraft positioning, which includes uh, using 
a pair of VOR receivers on board of aircraft or pair of uh, automatic directional finders. That's why also we can talk about VOR, VOR navigation and uh, ADF, ADF navigation. Therefore, modern uh, capability of onboard equipment consider uh, four types of uh, sensors. GNSS, inertial navigation system, and uh, two types of positioning by navigational aid. Uh, positioning by pair of DME-DME, positioning by pair of UR-DME, and only these four uh, types of positioning methods are compatible with PB PBN manual. However, uh, VOR, VOR and ADF, ADF can be used. Uh, however, we cannot reach uh, enough precision to perform position by AirNav1, for example. How it works on board of aircraft? Uh, as you know, on board of uh, modern big aircraft, we have flight management system. Flight management system it is a computer-based uh, system. And actually, FMS uh, does not include uh, any sensors inside, in many cases. And uh, flight management system is connected with radio management panel. Yep, radio management panel it is a specific like uh, panel or specific unit which uh, operates with uh, all uh, radio navigation equipment on board of aircraft. And FMS uh, sends specific uh, commands to RMP and then RMP according to these commands will change uh, operational frequencies of onboard DME interrogators. And uh, of course, uh, common configuration of avionics includes two sets of uh, DME interrogators, uh, DME A and DME B. That's why we can use uh, two DMEs interrogators simultaneously to measure two distances to two uh, absolutely different ground stations. And that's why it is possible to navigate a aircraft by two distances to fixed points uh, in, uh, in the space. That's why radio management panel uh, will change radio frequencies of DME A and DME B. Then uh, interrogators will be tuned to specific radio frequency, interrogate ground equipment, and then ground equipment send us reply and then we catch the distance to these uh, ground stations of DME A and B. Finally, each DME uh, give us distance or ranges to this uh, ground station. That's why DME A uh, provides dist measured distances to selected uh, DMEs. And these distances will uh, come back to flight management system. And then FMS can use these uh, distances uh, for counting uh, airplane co coordinates. This process is fully automatic and uh, during the flight also FMS should decide which uh, DMEs uh, are the most optimal or which pair give us the lowest level of error of positioning. That's why inside of FMS we have a specific algorithm for choosing uh, the most optimal pair of DME. And then based on this data, uh, RMP will change uh, settings for onboard DME interrogators. Then uh, we perform measurements and then uh, positioning algorithm inside of FMS can use this data to count uh, airplane coordinates. Uh, how DME works? Uh, first of all, DME it is distance measuring equipment. First of all, DME is uh, an active sensor that measures direct or slant range between aircraft and ground station. 
That's why uh, we uh, should consider two types of equipment. Onboard interrogator, which change, which send uh, interrogation at specific radio frequency of the ground station operation. And then ground station uh, send reply. And by this data, we can uh, count uh, distance uh, between ground station and DME interrogator or AU craft. Uh, this distance we can uh, count by quite simple formula. Uh, you can find it here. That's why range is equal half of uh, time of traveling uh, multiplying with the speed of radio waves propagation, which is constant and uh, is equal to 3 multiplying 10 uh, power 8 uh, meters per second. That's why... Uh, by quite simple formula, we can get a uh, range uh, to the DME ground station. Also, DME operates uh, with uh, this ultra high frequency band radio spectrum uh, that give us uh, 252 channels with one megahertz space in between each other. Thus, during the flight, uh, FMS uh, try to analyze uh, performance of DME ground network because inside of uh, flight management system we have database of global uh, DME network. That's why FMS exactly know location of each ground station and uh, type of this uh, DME ground station because there are different types and based on these uh, types uh, each DME has a specific operational volume. That's why uh, only within this service volume we can uh, get uh, distance measurements. That's why uh, FMS uh, should take into account uh, location of DME and uh, performance of uh, onboard of ground uh, equipment which is located in this DME. And uh, based on that, uh, FMS uh, provide us uh, the optimal pair of DME uh, for a particular point of aircraft location. And then, based on this uh, location, uh, RMP will uh, tune uh, DMEs on board for particular radio frequencies, and then we can get measured distances. During the uh, aircraft movement, always uh, configuration of uh, ground stations will be changed because uh, based on configuration we can get different performance. That's why uh, during the flight uh, we need to switch from one pair to another pair. And uh, internal algorithm of FMS uh, continuously should uh, monitor of uh, available amount of pairs and performance of this pair which can be provided. That's why if uh, this pair is optimal, yes, we use it. If not, uh, we try to use another pair of DME. That's why uh, always we uh, need to switch from one pair to another pair. And uh, first of all, let's talk about navigation equation. And uh, navigation equation or how we can count airplane location if we know distances and uh, coordinates of the ground stations. Uh, answer is quite simple because uh, navigation equations grounds on quite simple formula, mass formula, of distance between two points in Cartesian reference frame. That's why uh, if we uh, have Cartesian reference frame, like uh, NET or NEO reference frame, okay, first of all we need to transform latitude, longitude, altitude to the local Cartesian reference frame. If you remember latitude and longitude, it is a angular-based uh, reference frame. And uh, 
in most case latitude and longitude is not good for counting like distances or counting location that's why uh, in most time we need to switch from LLR or latitude longitude altitude to their Cartesian reference frame where we've got X Y and Z and uh, in case of DME uh, Z we do not need because uh, by two DMEs, we cannot count our altitude because there is only two uh, distances and two coordinates. That's why uh, we need to switch only to horizontal plane of uh, NET or NEO coordinate system. All of them is uh, local reference frame. Uh, we can uh, place uh, this reference frame at point of one DME location as an example. Uh, that's why point of one DME location, it will have coordinates like 0, 0. And then uh, horizontal plane uh, will be uh, tangential or, uh, or has a normal to the ellipsoidal surface. That's why in uh, aviation we use approximation of our planet like VGS84 ellipsoidal model and uh, uh, horizontal plane of NEO is uh, touched uh, ellipsoidal mo model at point of uh, one of DME ground station location. Or in in other in other hand, it looks like if we have uh, like ellipsoidal model, uh, our horizontal plane will be something like that. It will be uh, touched uh, at ellipsoidal model at particular point and then we've got uh, x direction uh, directed uh, to the north uh, y directed to the east and z if we need uh, it can be up or down that's why uh, this local reference frame called uh, net or now reference frame okay that's why uh, Inside of DME, we have database of precisely known coordinates of DME ground stations around the whole globe. And okay, uh, that's why uh, if we get DME ground station locations and we transform it to the local reference frame, it is quite easy, and this is just must formulas and this is not too complicated uh, then we can tune uh, DMEs we can measure these ranges however DME measures slant ranges or like direct uh, range between aircraft and ground station and for this navigation we need to have a horizontal component of uh, this range that's why usually FMS uh, uses uh, altitude of aircraft. It can be barometrical or radio altimeter uh, altitude. Thus, uh, MSL or uh, about ground level altitude can be used to recalculate uh, slant distance from DME to the horizontal component. And then in navigation equation, we use the horizontal component of this distance and uh, that's why we've got uh, this range uh, formula for counting distance between two points in cartesian reference frame quite e quite simple that's why this distance uh, squared is equal uh, uh, the sum of squared difference of coordinates between uh, two of these points and because we have two ranges okay we can measure it approximately simultaneously that's why uh, we can build a system of equation uh, by uh, two of these uh, formulas and as you can see coordinates of aircraft will be x and y will be the same in both uh, equations that's why our task uh, is to count coordinates x and y from all other known uh, variables. 
That's why we know location of uh, DME ground station A and we know location of DME ground station B. That's why we know these coordinates. And also I have told you that one of these coordinates can be equal 0, 0 due to located uh, reference frame in this uh, coordinate, in local reference frame. And uh, distances dA and dB uh, can be measured by DME and then transformed to the horizontal component. That's why here in uh, my picture R it means uh, slant range and uh, D means horizontal component of this slant range. How we can uh, solve this equation? As you can see, this uh, navigation equation is not linear. Uh, to do that, we can uh, apply different methods. First of all, we can use analytical method, uh, least square method, Taylor series expansion, or some genetic uh, algorithms. Um, in case of only pair of DME, uh, the most useful, of course, analytical. Analytical means that we can count exactly formula by which we can obtain value for x and y. And in this case, we've got zero uh, errors of computation. That's why analytical method uh, is quite uh, welcome in this research. At some system, at some another systems, uh, when we have multiple distances, okay, if we have three, four, five distances, uh, and we have a system of uh, nonlinear equation with multiple uh, formulas, of course, we cannot apply analytical methods. And in this case, we usually uh, use a Taylor series expansion to linearize uh, this system of equation. And then uh, by getting linearized system of equation, we can solve it quite easily. That's why mo uh, all other methods uh, in most uh, try to transform non-linear system of navigation equation into the linear form. And then we can solve quite easily uh, system of linear equation. That's why uh, uh, today in our talking I would like to consider with you analytical approach because uh, inside of most FMS uh, we have uh, analytical method because it is just formulas which we can quote and we can obtain uh, particular uh, values for x and y. Uh, that's why uh, here I just uh, has our system of uh, nonlinear equation and we can just minus one uh, equation from another equation and uh, you can see we, we will obtain uh, the following results. That's why quite simple, quite easy. Then we can open our uh, squared or power 2 and we obtain uh, the following results. Yep. Uh, next we change uh, a sign here. You'll see that I have changed a uh, sign here and all other stuff just uh, stay as it was. Uh, then uh, we can see that uh, there are values that we can minimize. For example, here we can uh, delete this axis and the same for y. That's why we just can delete uh, this stuff from our equation. And then we can uh, minimize it a little bit uh, near the x to get x and y separately. That's why uh, we've got uh, x only here and y only here. And uh, then uh, we moved uh, values near the y to one side of our equation. Uh, thus, I've got uh, the following results. 
and then we can obtain a value for y. You can see uh, that's why we can obtain value for y. And then we can use this y values. You will see that it is only x values in this equation and put it in one of our uh, formulas. For example, we can put y here. Okay. And uh, we've, go we've got a uh, simple equation with uh, only one unknown variable x. However, this variable will be at different uh, places here. Then, if you work a little bit with mass, this equation can be transformed to quadratic equa equation or polynomial with order by 2. That's why it will be like uh, a plus bx plus cx uh, at the second order equal to some values of 0. That's why it will be quadratic equation, and then this quadratic equation uh, we can uh, solve with the help of discriminant or well or quite oftenly used uh, mass formulas in geometry. However, uh, because we are scientists and we don't want to play with mass too much, and we uh, need to take care about errors that we can introduce in our formulas. That's why uh, we use uh, MATLAB to do all of this stuff, stuff for us. That's why here is a code uh, for symbolic toolbox of MATLAB. And uh, we can set up our equation. Yep. And then we just can use function solve and uh, we ask to solve this equation symbolically uh, for us and MATLAB uh, will do it. And then just use a function simplify to get a solution quite uh, short. And uh, we've got uh, the following results. That's why uh, we've got results for x and we've got results for y. That's why you, here you will see uh, the final formula. And this formula we can just uh, use in our algorithm to count uh, particular values x and y by uh, known uh, all other variables. However, we, we know it. Also, uh, we need to take into account that a solution of quadratic equation give us two points. And that's why I've got x1, y1, x2, uh, y2. Uh, this is because we've got quadratic equation and we've got two solutions of this quadratic equation. And uh, also we understood why it happened, because uh, two circles are crossing in two points in most, in most cases. That's why uh, we will get two points of our location. And internal algorithm of FMS just associate our location with the closest previous location. That's why FMS uh, need to accumulate previous location of aircraft and just compare first point with our previous location and second point with our previous location and just uh, choose the point which is closer to our previous location. Uh, let's consider some an example. Uh, if we locate our reference frame at uh, DME A, that's why coordinates of DME A will be 0, 0. Okay. Yep. And coordinates of B navigational aids uh, is uh, 100, 100. Then uh, we've got two measured distances, 42 and 98. Coordinates of aircraft, X and Y, 
we can count by uh, previous equation yep and uh, we will get uh, x which uh, equal to 30 and y is equal to 30. That's why um, analytical solution always give us a great result because here we do not have any trigonometric function. We have only multiplication power by 2 and plus or minus. That's why arithmetic operations uh, are always welcome inside of uh, flight management system. If we uh, talk about positioning by DME, always we need to take into account performance of positioning. Because if you, re if you remember that area navigation specification required to uh, estimate navigation system error, uh, which we will use in a specific formula to get total system error. And then based on total system error, we take a decision about uh, using particular navigation system. And uh, in this case, performance of positioning by pair of DME DME is quite important. And in this case, uh, if we can measure distance to DME, and we've got distance, for example, D8, always we measure with some errors, always. And it means that we, we, we get some error. And usually these errors also can represent in different form. In most cases we are talking about 95% uh, of confidence band, which means uh, minus to sigma and plus to sigma. That's why uh, if we measure something, we've got confidence band for measured values. And in navigation, usually we talk about 95% of this confidence band. And it means if we measure distance D, uh, we've got some ring of our uncertainty. It means we don't know where we are located. However, we are inside of this ring. And this ring give us 95% of our location. Okay, it means that in 100 measurements, uh, 95 uh, times we will be in, inside of ring and maybe five times we will be out of this ring. However, if we've got uh, the second DME and uh, we've got another ring from second DME and uh, during the positioning uh, performance of distance measurements give us some area of uncertainty. It means that we are located somewhere in this diamond. However, we do not know where we are inside of this diamond. And uh, we need to localize uh, mean square deviation, which is connected with uh, this diamond side. That's why uh, during the performance uh, analysis, uh, usually we try to count some uh, characteristic of uh, errors uh, of this diamond. If we also look uh, on some uh, geometric, geometric uh, schemes, and if you've got DME A here and DME B here, and uh, we've got a uh, line of uh, location and confidence band for measured values. That's why for DME A, we've got these two lines. That's why it is one boundary and this is the second one. For our confidence band for measured distance by uh, DME A. And uh, for another DME B, uh, we have uh, two other lines which forms confidence band for uh, our location. Uh, quite important here that 
this angle is equal to this angle. Why? Because uh, this is normal. That's why uh, two of these angles, it is result of rotation of our angle. Okay. That's why two of these angles are equal each other. That's why then this angle is equal to this angle. That's why we've got that. This angle is equal to this and to this one. And uh, what we need, we just need to count uh, this distance between two uh, of these uh, confidence bands in this case. And we can do it by, by simple mass equation, which grounds of cosine trigonometric theorem, uh, which we can uh, write by this quite simple formula. That's why delta p, it will be this distance, is equal uh, O p1 plus O1 p2 and minus uh, double uh, multiplication of two of these uh, distances with a cosine of angle between them. That's why uh, we can get it. Then, what about uh, these distances? These distances we also can obtain from triangles, from another triangles. That's why uh, O1, P1, we can count from this triangle. And uh, O1, P2, we can count from this triangle. Uh, this value we know due to uh, known uh, precision of measurements, distance, based on uh, two sigma interval, and also this length we also know. That's why uh, we can get uh, these distances by uh, quite simple uh, trigonometric formulas from rectangles. And then uh, we can put it inside of our equation. Okay. Uh, we can obtain the following form. Then we can a little bit transform it because we've got the same uh, sign here. That's why finally we can obtain uh, as following. However, uh, due to all measurements, delta here it was momental errors. That's why each time when we measure, we've got different errors due to influence of normal noise. That's why one time it may, may be 10 meters, another time it may be maybe 20 meters, uh, third time it, will, it may be like 30 meters. That's why each time delta is different because it is error of measurements by particular sensor. Uh, that's why if we would like to go from momental error to statistical uh, values like standard deviation, we can jump easily because, uh, because uh, it is result, it is like mean value of this fluctuation. That's why uh, we can obtain dispersion of positioning or uh, squared value of mean square uh, of standard deviation. The same for uh, delta b, it will be sigma b, or error of measurements distance for ground station b. Then uh, the same for a. And the same for A and B. However, in this case, we need to take into account that uh, we should introduce rho, which is a uh, correlation coefficient between uh, two of these uh, sigmas. Also, we need to take into account that um, all of these distances 
are measured by different sensors. That's why we, we've got one DME for measuring range to DME A and the second DME for measuring distance to DME B. That's why we use two different uh, sensors. Uh, it means that correlation between uh, errors of these sensors um, is zero. That's why uh, correlation coefficient, coefficient uh, we uh, take into account that is equal to zero and uh, it gives us that we can just uh, minimize uh, this part of equation. And finally we obtain uh, the following formula for counting uh, standard deviation for positioning uh, error of uh, DME DME navigation. Uh, this formula uh, is recommended by ICAO in document uh, 9613. That's why uh, you can find it here, however, without uh, detailed description. However, now, uh, up to now, I think you know why it happened. If you have any questions, please uh, let me know by uh, comments and uh, I will try to help you. Because um, this is our topic and we need to uh, understand carefully everything that is uh, going inside of our formula. Uh, okay. Uh, in most cases, also, uh, in navigation, we usually use uh, another approach for counting errors. And uh, its approach grounds on Taylor series expansion. That's why if we apply Taylor series, we also can obtain formulas and we can count uh, standard deviation for positioning error. Uh, that's why I think uh, this another approach also we need to consider in our lecture because uh, you can met it in uh, some uh, research articles or maybe in some uh, documents. However, both of these uh, approaches give us approximately the same result. However, uh, there is some difference. That's why um, let's talk about uh, Taylor series expansion method. And uh, in this case, our equation can be uh, written as a function from distance. Okay. And uh, Taylor series expansion by first order of derivatives give us the following thing and it told us that function from variable d plus okay some another variable or in our case uh, d it may be true distance which is uh, actually we've got based on airplane location and delta d it is uh, additional error for distance measuring and uh, we can write that f from d, it is a true location, plus uh, partial derivatives from our function f of d by x multiplying with error delta x, plus partial derivatives from function by y uh, multiplying with uh, error by y. That's why, uh, in this case, Taylor series expansion uh, give us connection between errors of measurements in distance with uh, errors of uh, positioning in by axis x and y in some reference frame, Cartesian reference frame. That's why uh, we can just uh, move uh, true values and we can represent that errors of uh, distance measuring is equal to this part based on uh, logic in Taylor series expansion. And uh, this equation 
we can rewrite in the following form. Uh, where matrix H it is partial derivatives matrix, uh, matrix W it is matrix on of uh, uh, standard deviations of uh, distance measuring by DME A and by DME B and uh, matrix H if you apply partial derivatives to our system of equation we obtain in the following form because uh, okay it's also quite um, easier to understood how how uh, matrix H is obtained and uh, standard deviation of position and by pair of DME can be obtained by simple uh, summarization of uh, elements of main diagonal of th this matrix. That's why we need to count uh, this formula. We obtain squared matrix and then just make sum of this diagonal. Uh, it will be uh, uh, standard deviation of uh, positioning by pair of DME. Uh, also quite important that uh, values of this one uh, give us information about rotation of ellipsoid of uncertainty in horizontal place. Oh sorry, ellipse of uncertainty in horizontal place plane. That's why uh, all elements of all of these uh, matrix helps us to to uh, to get ellipsoidal representation of errors of positioning in space. Okay, uh, let's go next. If we come back to our previous formulas, uh, which is recommended by ICAO document which is the following, uh, give us quite uh, interest result. If you consider, for example, uh, some DME pair like Paris pill and uh, DME locates uh, near Giuliani airport. Uh, you can see that uh, here we've got alpha angle. And uh, in most case, performance of positioning depends on alpha angle or internal angle between direction to their uh, DME pairs to, to the DME pair and uh, it is also important that we can get lines of constant angles and uh, here you can see uh, results of uh, calculation lines of constant angles for this particular DME pair. Uh, 150, 90 degrees, 70 degrees, 50 degrees, 40 degrees and 30 degrees. Uh, these lines of uh, constant angles we can count by these formulas. This, this is a uh, coordinate of center line location where D is a uh, distance between base between DMEs which called base of uh, DME DME pair. That's why uh, first of all we need to count coordinates of center and then we can use radius of uh, this circle. Uh, also, uh, it's quite important that uh, sign can reach values between 0 and 1. That's why we can localize minimum and maximum values for uh, internal angle alpha. Uh, which can give us particular pe performance. And usually uh, in this case uh, we need to take into account confidence band. And uh, we use 
as usually two sigma confidence band which give us 95 percent of measured values that's why uh, that's why uh, we can represent uh, equation as following that's why we consider uh, the area within which uh, performance can be reduced double time from maximum value and uh, in this case uh, we can obtain that sine uh, of this angle should be equal uh, a half of one and uh, half of one of sine we've got at two points 30 degrees and 100 degrees 150 degrees that's why uh, in document uh, ICAO uh, we've got uh, uh, perils for internal angle between directions to the DMEs in 30 degrees and 150 and uh, based on this relation uh, and uh, based on normative documents we can use DME DME positioning method only within area where these angles uh, uh, is that's why uh, here you can see uh, the same uh, DME pair between Brispil DME and uh, Juliani Airport Brispil uh, Juliani DME and uh, you can see a contour graph of lines of, con uh, of constant uh, accuracy in meters that's why uh, here is approximately 300 meters here 500 uh, meters and goes on and uh, finally uh, these angles okay 30 and 150 uh, form the fall the following uh, areas around DMEs that's why only within this area green one uh, internal angle between directions is from 30 up to 150 that's why only if aircraft will be inside of these circles we can use uh, this pair for navigation if aircraft will be for example here we cannot use it for navigation because our errors will be quite valuable and it is doesn't make sense to use it or, or if for example aircraft will be at the baseline between uh, two DMEs uh, in the pair this is also give us quite uh, big error and uh, uh, in some cases even we cannot solve this uh, equation that's why uh, internal angle take important uh, place in position and, and that's why uh, we've got uh, these perils in normative document and um, now let's come back to ATSEP air traffic service personnel and in this case if you talk about air navigation service provider as well uh, we need to take attention about performance of ground DME network because configuration of ground network is connected with uh, uh, area where we can use uh, a pair of DMEs for navigation that's why um, in this case we usually use some iterative approach and uh, we count uh, internal angle and then uh, simulate errors of measurements of DME 
to get uh, standard deviation of position and error for the median position in method. And uh, then we can get particular values for the whole airspace and then just cut it by the line of constant uh, uh, values of uh, standard deviation. And we can obtain as following contour graph. Uh, this is result, uh, results which uh, have been obtained by me for a Ukrainian air navigation network of DME ground station. That's why red dots here, it is a place where ground stations uh, are located. And the color graph show us result of standard deviation sigma positioning counting in meters. And we can see that at the center of network, we've got uh, quite uh, good results, like 300 meters, which is under the, uh, which is inside of uh, RNPR now one requirement. Then, uh, if you remember, double sigma give us navigation system error. That's why double sigma distribution is represented here as navigation system error. And then if we add navigation system error to FTE or flight technical error, and normative document for uh, RNPR NAV1 give us particular value for FTE. And I will be glad if you write me which FTE value uh, you will use in your uh, calculation because we, we've got requirements of normative documents. However, maybe some INSP use uh, another, another values for FTE because there are a lot of uh, research, tons of research in FTE and uh, FTE can be different with some margin for, for some uh, statistical data. Okay, and then we just can compare total system error, which is a sum of FTE and NEC. Uh, and uh, we've got total system error and then we can compare of uh, this TSC with requirements of RNAV1, RNAV2 and RNAV5. And we can get uh, the following uh, contour graph where we can see like red areas which means uh, not compatible with any RNP RNAV uh, requirements and the blue one it is uh, compatibility with RNAV1. Uh, also, in some cases, we need to take into account layers because um, there are different types of DMEs. Uh, some of them can operate only at uh, lower airspace. Some of them can cover uh, the whole uh, airspace volume. That's why uh, usually the same approach uh, can be done for different levels of altitude. And uh, then uh, a place of compatible with uh, area navigation specifications, for example here is RNAV1, uh, can be represented as a three-dimensional model of airspace with particular values of altitude from a particular reference point. And in my case, I use uh, uh, VGS84 reference for point for altitude. Also, uh, in this simulation, uh, we use um, SRTM or digital elevation model. That's why here you can see we've got some mountains. And uh, artificial elements or uh, geometry of relief uh, take uh, serious problem for radio waves propagation. That's why service volume of each DME can be limited by ground 
by ground. And that's why we need to take into account uh, relief model when we estimate visibility uh, area of uh, DME at particular flight level. That's why, yep, usually in this uh, type of uh, computer simulation, we get SRTM. Uh, they are open for the whole globe, even for Moon or Mars. That's why if you would like to put uh, DME network uh, on Moon, okay, you're welcome, why not? <laughs> We've got relief, that's why we can uh, simulate. And who knows, maybe in 100 years we will get DME network on Moon. <laughs> okay. Uh, probably that's all that uh, I would like to tell you today uh, related uh, to the uh, DME DME navigation. Thank you very much for watching, for take uh, attention, and uh, of course uh, I will be glad to assist you if you have any questions. Okay. Also, I am open for any kind of uh, collaboration with you. Of course, if you are working in this domain and you have uh, quite fresh ideas to how to improve performance of our uh, DME network, I mean uh, global DME network, because uh, actually nowadays it is one of the main uh, standby position and approach in civil aviation. Okay, that's why. Thank you very much. Uh, Vanas Trumov. See you uh, later.